السلام عليكم مساء الخير على الجميع and uh, in collaboration between the academic writing center and the faculty of computing and information technology we would like to welcome you to our first workshop in the academic and the technical writing series here presented at the academic writing center at KAU so today's presentation is going to be about uh, writing a research, pro, a research article, The Fundamentals, presented by Dr. Nashwa Saadi. Thank you, Dr. Nashwa, for taking the lead, uh, presenting uh, this very important uh, topic. And we all need this topic about how to write a research uh, article. So Dr. Nashwa, the floor is yours. You may start now. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Basim. Thank you, everyone. Good evening. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you for attending uh, this workshop. And uh, I would also like to thank the, um, the uh, Academic Writing Center for allowing me to present today. Um, today's workshop is about writing a research article, The Fundamentals. Um, before we start, I'd just like to say, just introduce myself. Um, my name is Dr. Nishwa Samati. I'm an assistant professor at the English Language Institute. Uh, I'm the head of the Graduate Studies and Academic Research Unit there. And uh, basically what I'm going to be talking about today um, comes a lot from what I've experienced with my graduate, with, with, with my students, my uh, postgraduate students, MA students. Um, so it's basically, again, like the fundamentals, straight to the point, uh, things that could be very useful uh, for you. Um, another thing I would like to say is that I come from a um, social science background, um, specifically uh, teaching English for, uh, you saw, teaching English for, uh, to other speakers or, um, Basically, it's an educational background. So there might be some differences in terms of what is included, what's not included in terms of um, in research papers um, or research articles. However, what we're going to discuss is uh, fundamentals or the basics that most research articles are going to, are going to include. Um, again, but you need to refer back to, to your field. You need to refer back to um, to, to the area of, of expertise, of your area of expertise, and you might find um, some differences. Um, um, today, I'm going to be uh, using one article, um, the article that you see in front of you as an example. Um, uh, the, article is, uh, the article is entitled The Interaction of Motivation, Self-Regulatory Strategies, and Autonomous Learning Behavior in Different Learner Groups. This is basically my uh, area of expertise. Specifically, um, L2 motivation is um, um, what I'm interested in, um, autonomous learning as well. Um, again, this is social sciences. However, um, again, we're going to discuss the basics uh, that might you, you, that you will find in research articles uh, in different fields. Um, a research article, in, in short, is basically an article that reports on original research and is published in a peer-reviewed journal. Um, and so if you want to publish in a peer-reviewed journal, you would, again, include these kind of, these basic kind of like components. Um, you have to think about the title, and obviously you would have the authors and affiliation, as you can see here. You have to think about abstracts, keywords, and you have to, and another thing that was the content, in terms of the content of the research paper is an introduction and literature review. Now, if you notice, I put them, I put them next to each other because in some uh, research articles, introductions and literature review are, uh, the literature review is included in the introduction. And in some cases, as the case of this um, article, it's not, it's, it's a it's different section. Then you have the methods, the results, the discussion, the conclusion and references. Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit about the title, 
and a little bit about the abstract only because they are quite important in, in terms in terms of like again when you're thinking about um, writing a research article and then obviously we're going to look at are we going to talk about the introduction uh, the methods and results and discussion sections but before we do that it's very important to think about your research question um, this is something that you would do beforehand, obviously, before even you start your, um, your research, before you start anything, but even, the, even when you're actually writing um, your uh, research article, it's very, very important to think about your research question. Um, as you, I'm sure, as you all know, a good research paper addresses a specific research question. Uh, it's basically the objective or the main hypothesis of your research. And one of the reasons why it's very important when you're thinking about writing a research um, research article is because it is the central organizing principle of the paper. And in short, uh, this is a very important quote, and this is something that I always tell my students, whatever relates to the research question belongs in the paper. The rest doesn't. Although tempting, and especially when you've read so much, and a lot of what you read is very interesting, is very intriguing and everything. However, you need to focus on your research question. If it does not relate to it, it does not belong in the paper. Again, very important um, advice, and I keep repeating it to my students because you get um, enthusiastic, you get, um, whether it's, the literature that you're reading or the results that come up or different areas of discussion that you would like to include. Um, many of them uh, do not actually relate to your research question. So always go back to, when you're writing your research, whether it's a research paper or a research article, an assignment, dissertation, anything, go back to your research uh, questions. Okay, uh, a few notes on the title. If you look at the title of this article, the interaction of motivation, self-regulatory strategies, and autonomous learning behavior in different learner groups. It is to the point, it tells you exactly what the article is going to be about, what the study is going to be about. And why is, why, why is it important to think about it? Because your title, your abstract, and the keywords that you are used are basically the form of communication between you and between your audience. And is also freely available online. Now, sometimes the paper itself is not available, but your abstract and your uh, title is available, which means that your research is also available. So in, a, in, in that sense, um, you're able to reach uh, a larger reader or readers or large larger audience if you have a very if you thought if you have a well thought thought out uh, title and abstract and so forth um, you would um, if your title does not reflect your study then you are doing a very um, uh, uh, this is normal research <laughs> I can't think of an of uh, of, of an English uh, interpretation to it so you have to think about it, uh, sorry, I didn't think about an English translation for it. You have to really think about uh, your title and your, uh, your, your keywords when you're um, writing your um, research paper. Um, again, it has to identify the main issue, again, in, just by look, whether you're in the field or not, just by looking at the title, you know what it's going to be about. You know, the three variables or the three elements or the three factors that it's going to discuss, motivation, self-regulatory strategies, autonomous learning, and we, we, you know the different areas that it's going to cover. Um, some people would say that it's better to avoid the study of, investigation into, and observation on in titles. But again, I think you should refer to uh, your field and whether this is a common practice or not. Um, abstract, I'm sure, again, you're many of you are familiar with abstract. Uh, again, um, very important because they are available free, free online, uh, direct communication with, with different audiences. Um, in terms of the structure, it's basically the same way of 
writing a paper, which is an introduction and methods and results and so forth. So it's a summary, usually in one paragraph, uh, it does not exceed more than 300 words and do not use references um, in them. Um, but again, it's just a summary of your paper. Um, usually, again, I'm sure this is something that you do. You read the title, you read the abstract, and then you decide whether you want to continue reading the paper, whether you want to purchase the paper, uh, whether you want to download it, and, and so forth. Um, okay, and then we're going to start into the actual component of, our, of a research article. If you notice in this article, the it's not labeled as introduction there, the introduction is not labeled there isn't a heading uh referred to as an introduction sometimes it's labeled sometimes it's not um but in any case it kind of more or less provides the background and and context to the study now whether you include or whether you include the literature review in the introduction if you label it as introduction and you include the literature review um um or not depends again on your on, on the field or on maybe uh, different different considerations you would have to think about. But basically, um, if you do include a literature review, obviously you have to consider um, uh, discussing previous work, identifying gaps, and um, whether and again this is if you want to include a literature review if you don't want to include a literature review important thing is that you need to include is the aim or the, the aim of the study basically and what it's supposed to address and why it is important um however in this article as you can see it's clearly stated that there is a review of the literature and one of the, the things that I also like, I always, always tell uh, my students is when you're reviewing the literature, it's very important to focus on primary research journals, uh, journals that are publish original research articles. Uh, many students, um, they go back to encyclopedias, textbooks, uh, and, and maybe in other fields in terms of lab manuals and everything and all these things, but you have to be very, very careful because this could be considered common knowledge and therefore you don't cite them and they're not necessarily considered um, um, uh, literature that would support an argument within your research um, or within your study. Um, another important thing that I also uh, uh, tell my students is that it's very important to cite articles that are relevant to your study. Again, in this stage, um, you read a lot of interesting things, you read a lot of interesting studies, a lot of them are very intriguing um, and everything, but do they relate to your study? Do they relate to your research question? Again, this is very, very, very important. Um, and also maybe in some cases not very easy, but not very easy in terms of, again, this is something very interesting. This is something that I want to include. This is something that um, I, I would like to share with my, with, with my with the readers or with the audience and so forth. But you have to go back to that. Does it relate to my um, to my research? Uh, okay, I, uh, someone here is asking, oh, is it is it clear? Is my voice clear? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, uh, so if extra findings, there's a question. If extra findings showed up, we didn't include them. What if, I'm not sure I'm, I understand the question. Textbooks, textbooks, they're not research. Again, you want to look at original research. Um, again, because textbook usually include common knowledge, so it's not originally research. Usually in studies, you include original research. Uh, which point would you like me to repeat? Oh, the research question, yes. 
Now, I'm sure I'm 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 not sure if if the writing center is going to offer already offered um, uh, workshops on how to formulate research questions. So that's that's like a workshop on its own. But uh, research questions are you, you have to really think they have to be well really well thought of, uh, whether it's one or two and all that kind of stuff. But it's basically the central focus of your paper. The central focus of your assignment, the central focus of your thesis. So it's always you have to go back to it. Is what I, whatever I'm writing, whether it's in the literature review, whether it's in the results uh, discussion, does it relate to the literature to the research question? And therefore, it would make your writing or your 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 written, whether again it's an assignment or a research article, a dissertation, a thesis it would make it uh, cohesive and it would make sense. Uh, the point about the journals, the first point in the slide. And this slide? Okay. Sorry. Uh, Again, so basically, if you go back to journals in your field, and journals, because again, one of the most important thing is that journals, they report original research. Bimana, in no research uh, and the findings that are original, that uh, that's not, um, it's not, uh, it's not like it's not common. It's something that you think about. You think about different variables, putting them together, maybe different contexts, different way uh, of, of of researching a certain um, phenomena, a different, and all these things. So the results are always original, and so these are the ones that you would refer to when you are citing in your literature review. When I'm, when I'm saying textbooks and encyclopedias and manuals, they would usually refer to facts, uh, common knowledge, things that are known everywhere. It's not, it's not something specific. You don't cite it because it's common. It's common knowledge. You cite things when they are specific and they're original and they are not a fact. They are not, uh, not, not, not that they are not facts, but just not original ideas. But they are, sorry, they are original ideas. They're not um, common knowledge. <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, good. And by the way, you will notice, again, it differs from field to another. You, would, you will notice that there are research are actually sometimes contradictory. Uh, you find opposing schools of thoughts, for example. Uh, you, and therefore, but of course, in your case, and, and again, when you're focusing on your research questions and the aims and so forth, you would know which, uh, which um, resources you would use to support your um, uh, your your argument in your literature review. The background section is is more or less the literature review because in the literature review part you're actually, I mean, are you referring to the context section? What do you mean by the background section? Because the background is included in either your introduction, your literature review, or whether it's one section, like introduction and literature review is, is in one section. So you provide um, information, you provide um, um, sources that, again, you have an argument, and then you would have um, sources that uh, support your argument. The point about textbooks, um, if the textbooks includes um, references to original re research, that, that's fine. But usually textbooks don't. But I just kind of like have like important uh, facts about a certain subject or topic or something. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, any other questions in terms of uh, related to literature review? Uh, another thing that you would consider is headings within the literature review. If you remember the title of this um, article, motivation, self-regulatory uh, self -regulatory, uh, strategies, and uh, autonomy. So these are three different areas. Now I will show you, I don't know if it's uh, I don't know if you can see the screen here. I'll just uh, share another screen of the actual article. Uh, can you see the actual article? Okay. So this is what I'm referring to when I'm saying that um, there are headings. So this is the review of the literature. Um, but if you notice the, he the, the headings of the literature review or the subheadings or whatever. So you have motivational factors. So I'm going to be, or the person or the authors were discussing uh, motivational factors and they were looking at the context and different studies and so forth. And then they are, we're talking about self-regulation processes. And then again, all the kind of resources and everything that relates to that. And then learner autonomy and autonomous behavior. And then they link it together. Links among motivation, self-regulation and autonomous learning. And so again, these kind of, when, when, when all the studies that they're referring to here, they are going to, re, are you going to refer, refer to them later on in your discussion. We're going to discuss that uh, further on. Uh, so again, if, when you're thinking about, okay, try to zoom in. Is that better? So again, think about how you want, again, even your literature review is not just about just putting all to different studies about motivation or all studies about self-regulation or all studies about autonomous learning. That's a big mistake. Still, you have to go back. Does this relate to the research um, question? Does this, relate, does this relate to my study? So you have to be very selective. You also have to think about the argument. What is it that you want to argue in your literature review. Remember, within the field, there are different points of view, different, sometimes they're very opposing, uh, sometimes they're contradictory. So you would have to position yourself in your literature review section. As you can see, so again, they were talking about motivational factors, all different uh, types of, um, studies and all different kind of perspectives. And then they've linked them together. So they were discussing studies or they were discussing the different ways that these three things that they are going to look at in the study actually relates or that there is a relationship or not, again, depending on uh, the argument that they would like to present in the literature review. I did not understand this. Uh, what exactly did you <laughs> understand? Okay, literature review. You're going to, if you're going to read about any specific topic, any topic, okay? Um, say, for example, the topic could be anything like, Chocolate, okay? Chocolate, that's a topic. Some people would say chocolate is good for you. Other people would say chocolate is bad for you. And then some people say no, but there are aspects of chocolate that's good and there are aspects of chocolate that's not good and so forth. So in your literature review, you are going to present the different views, but then you are going to also position yourself in these views in a certain way, in, in the argument that you are going to present. And you notice this when you're actually read, reading articles and you're reading, even from your start, from the, from, from the very beginning, you can tell 
where this person or where this author is positioning uh, themselves. Uh, generally speaking, again, if you are a person who thinks chocolate is good for you, not necessarily in health wise, not necessarily because they're healthy, but because um, they make you feel good, then you are actually going to choose probably or going to uh, select resources or studies that are going to support that position. But keeping in mind that you also have to look at the different opposing uh, arguments in order to present something that is, um, um, you know, present like a complete picture of something, but at the same time, you, you position yourself within that, um, um, within an argument. Differences and similarities, and what you, yeah, I mean, I know if uh, I'm sure there are like uh, workshops, might have been a few workshops later on about literature review and the different types of literature review. Again, so it's not just about how to cool at about a specific topic, you have to. You have to focus. You have to think about them, and you have to be very thoughtful and select those that would um, make sense in terms of the whole um, article. And whether again, does this relate to my study? Does this relate to the research questions and so forth? Is a to quill all if if you if you include everything related to the topic, it's going to be it's going to be all over the place. So what is it that you want to say? Where is it? Where do? Where? Where is it? What, what is your point of view? Uh, again, a key question or a key thing to think about is: Does this relate to the research uh, questions or question or not? Does this relate to the aim that I'm trying uh, to address, and so forth? So, okay, for example, now in, in terms of the literature, if you notice that here when they say, when they discuss motivational factors and they've discussed um, self regulation and all of these things, but then they had the, yeah, they, they also discussed the links between them. Why are they discussing the links between them? What is the purpose? Because the paper is about the interaction between these three things. And this is why this section is included and all the resources in this section uh, discusses, again, the links between these three um, factors or these three areas. Okay, so going back to the slides, I'm gonna share them with you now. Okay, so um, usually we would um, use a past tense. In some areas, again, it depends on how you present your argument, you would use the uh, present tense. Again, to what, to what degree the author becomes... Um... Okay, good, so there is, there is yeah, I'm, I'm sure there, there are a lot of workshops uh, that talk about literature review. Um, so after you're done with the literature review and all of these things and, and looking at them, you start looking at the um, method, method, methodology, yeah, method. Um, and in the method, you're basically describing uh, the context and setting of the study. So, for example, where, where was the study? And again, to what degree is the context important? Is the context going to, or does it affect the results, or does it affect anything related to the study? Um, study design and justification for all of it. Basically, had to fill the method section, basically, you're, you're justifying. Uh, the choices behind um, your 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 study. So, uh, the population, your participants, or again, it depends on 
which, which field you are in. So if, I don't know, if you're in science, it's a completely different, uh, different things. You're probably going to look at, I don't know, plants, animals, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I mean, in social sciences, humans are basically your, um, the focus of your study. And so you are going to, again, when you're talking about, or when you're, again, in your participants, for example, in this area, we're, because it's about education and language learning, so our participants, uh, we're going to talk about who they are, where they're from, how many how many were, were involved in our, or participated in the research, and so forth. Yes, for example, if you replicated a study that was conducted in um, Hungary, for example. Now, this study was conducted in Hungary, I think, or or it's based on a study conducted in, in Hungary. Uh, and you conducted and you replicated the exact same study with minor changes, maybe, in Saudi Arabia. Would the results be different or not? Likely, they will be different. Yes, whatever you've done in the study. You write in, in, a, in, a, in a way that, um, that allows other people, if possible, to replicate what you have done, also to ensure that your research is valid. Again, because you want to present something that, is, um, that contributes to your field. And one of the most important thing is, things that to consider is whether it's valid and reliable. So, and this is where you, method, the method section becomes very important. So you're talking about your participants, you are talking about the field of context, for example, is it in Saudi Arabia, is the context between Saudi Arabia and Japan with the same study, would it yield different results? Most likely it will. Even within Saudi Arabia. Uh, a same study conducted in Jeddah and Riyadh. Will the results be different? Um, the same study conducted different times. Will the results be different? Most likely, it might. I mean, it might be. Um, clearly, it has to be clear. It has to be concise. It has to be straightforward. Um, it has to be, again, it depends on also the, the design, for example, um, if you're doing mixed method, if you're doing quantitative, if you're doing qualitative and, and so forth, or different designs, if you're doing case studies and so forth, you have to state that clearly in your method section. Uh, if you have an intervention, you have to describe the intervention, everything relates to the intervention, you have to describe the protocol or procedure for collecting uh, data how it was uh, carried out. You also have to describe the instrument, the different instruments, why you chose these instruments. There is, has to be a justification for your choices. The reasons why you, you include, you present it in, 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 in that way, again, to, in, to ensure or to, to communicate the validity of your study to the audience. So you describe the data collection instrument and the procedures involved and, and the analysis method. Again, so if I'm reading this study and I find this interesting, I say, well, what if I apply this to a Saudi context, to uh, Saudi learners? So I go to this section and I look at the sampling, how they sampled, and I try to see if I can do the same thing. I look at the intervention, whether I, it's applicable in my context or not. I look at the instruments, whether it's surveys or and so forth, or I look at how, like the analysis methods, I think this was um, statistical modeling or something like that, and see if I can replicate the same thing in, 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 in my context. And again, what kind of results that are going to come and whether optimists um, elaborate on what exactly? Uh, the intervention, the experiment. 
um, whatever. For example, I'm studying. Uh, uh, um, Again, I'm going to refer a lot to education and language learning because that's my background. So say, for example, I have two classrooms, okay? And I want to see whether um, using uh, video games or whether using games is actually going to help students learn more. Again, this is a very simple, very generic kind of um, study, for example, okay? So in one classroom, I introduce games when I'm teaching English. In the other classroom, I don't. And then I compare between them. So there's a control group or in there, and, and these kind of like an experimental or intervention. So the intervention is this including um, something. It's like a, it's, uh, it's the experiment that you're going to do. And again, how are you going to compare it? How are you going to do it? How are you going to analyze it? It differs are so many ways of, of doing it but again this is just a generic way so in one classroom i use it and the other classroom i don't use it and then i compare between the two for example using um the same test post test pre-test and so all of these kind of things yes yes <laughs> Also, uh, just again, just to give you an idea why I, I, my background is not experimental. I'm a qualitative kind of a, a researcher, so I've never done intervention. But again, I like when you read about interventions and experimental studies and all these kind of stuff, it, it, this is basically um, the gist of it. Okay, so again, so in this section, these are kind of all of the things that you need to include. Any questions on the method section? Okay, um, another thing that you have to um, consider is that uh, past tense. Because again, in this case, you're going to tell them what you have already done, what, what you've done. So it's usually reporting something in the um, past. Uh, in terms of avoiding the first person um, in this section, again, it depends on different approaches to research. In some, um, in, in some um, cases, qualitative sometimes or different school of thoughts where they're saying the researcher should be present and the researcher should actually use I and should include um, even a part of themselves and their background and so forth in the study just to show that whether if not if but there is going to be bias again this is again one one point of view in terms of of research that research can never be 100% objective. There has to be subjectivity because we're dealing with humans and so forth. But that's in social sciences. I'm assuming in um, natural sciences, it's going to be a different story. But again, it depends on, so you have to go back to your field. Um, and to what degree you're going to use a first person or not, or you're going to use yourself and so forth. So after you're done, so this is what I've done. This is how I collected uh, the data. This is how I analyzed the data. These were the tests and these were the, this was the procedure in doing it. I go back, I go now to the results section. Um, so basically in this section is what did I find out? Okay, so I had done, I've been looking at something and so what came out? Now in this section, you are going to report on the data that you have collected. Okay, so the point, uh, the main focus here should be um, objectively, you have to be very objective and very concise and present key results, not necessarily everything. Again, you have to be very selective. Does this relate to my study? And sometimes in many cases, and I'm sure you, you've heard of this, uh, in like one study, you can like write three papers or two papers or whatever. So for, you know, you, each paper has a different focus. And so in, in this section, you would only 
I, first person I. I, I collected, I did, I. Active voice. The data was collected, I collected the data. That's the difference. So I collected the, or the researcher, so the, where the researcher is present in the study, the data was collected, the focus is on the data and not on the researcher. So again, there's a different point of view. Uh, one point of view or one, um, you know, again, different schools of thought where you're saying you cannot ignore the presence of and the subjectivity of the research and it should be included in the, the, um, the research. And then the other would say, no, you have to be very objective and you have to focus on the data and so forth. Okay, so in this um, section, you presented whether in text or, for example, like you can see here, structural uh, equation uh, model here, as you can see, um, graphs, um, tables. Um, so again, make sure that it relates to your central uh, or to your research question. Don't include everything, just be very focused and, uh, and select based on that. Uh, findings, okay. Uh, you're going to, a lot of things are going to come up in your results. Some, some actually, uh, sometimes results that you did not expect. Okay? Sometimes you go into a, how do you kind of have an idea, you know, what, what could, yeah, and this could be expected or so forth. And sometimes in findings, that are completely unexpected, especially in qualitative research, where you it kind of like data is basically kind of like um, guiding you towards certain areas. Um, you have to think about which ones, which results to include in your article. So they have to be key results, important ones, significant ones, the ones that um, relate to your research question. Okay, again, this might sound, sound easy, not, 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 not necessarily. So you have to think about your research, your, the, the aim, the focus of it, and, and then based, uh, based on that, choose the results or choose key results, significant. Not had to come on in some cases, not necessarily what I mean by significant results here, not necessarily like you ignore the insignificant or you become very biased in reporting. Again, you have to be very objective in reporting. So even if results were not the ones that you were expecting or the ones that you were hoping for, you include them. Ah, uh -uh, no, no. This is not where, because the literature review is when you start to interpret your results. You do not interpret the results in, in the results section. A result is basically just reporting on your key results and including, um, again, try to make it logical, including illustrative materials, if that's, if that's again, if that is uh, relevant to your study. Again, you have to think about how to sequence, a, a sequence also the results section in, in a sense that it has to make, it has to be logical, it has to make sense. Um, and also, again, does it answer or does it include things that could answer the research question? Okay. Uh, yes, yes. Do not interpret your data here. We start interpreting the data in the discussion section. So we've presented our key results. And then we go now to the results section where we uh, interpret those results in light of what we already know. So in light of what we know from the literature, uh, here is where we start to kind of refer back to previous studies, whether again, to 
uh, again, whether you want to support a specific uh, point of view or a theoretical framework, whether you want to amend it, whether you want to say, you know, no, we have to completely reconceptualize a certain theory or a theoretical framework or a hypothesis, whatever. So this is where the all, uh, it, where it all happens. And usually this is the interesting part of the article, the discussion, or at least I think so. So this is where everything kind of comes together. So this is where you go back and refer to the previous uh, studies. And this is where you argue whether if your findings have some relationship to literature, what not to support it? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Yes, in some cases, yes. Some cases you would you would you would join them together, but in a, in a specific sequence, yeah, I know result or discussion. Some would put result discussion or self-discussion, but Anna personally, I think it would make more sense, result and then discussion. Or at least this is what I always recommend um, or what I prefer. But usually, again, if you go back to the articles, you would see the results and then the discussion. Okay, so in the discussion here is then you go back again to, you refer back to the literature review and then you start to, uh, again, where is where do you stand in all of this? So you started an argument or uh, you started kind of, you've positioned yourself to a degree for literature review and in the discussion, it kind of like really shows where you are. And um, you also start here to analyze the strengths and the limitation of your study. You mean all of the literature review? No, 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 no. Because a huge part of the literature review is a background. Uh, so what do you mean? Oh, all of this? Most likely, yes. Um, one thing, um, kind of, but the, the, the idea of, of, of in the literature review, had like different studies, but they argue they're, they support a specific point of view. Uh, yes, but just this is what I'm saying, like not yeah, yeah, if, as long as those studies, whether you've mentioned them or if you're going to mention, they are supporting a, yeah, a point of view. For example, chocolate is good, chocolate is bad. This is your main argument. And then whatever discussion is saying, oh, and the results of my, as you can see, the, the results of the study actually supports that. Uh, the idea that although chocolate may not may contains a great deal of sugar, but it does um, ha has a very positive effect on one's mood, <laughs> for example. And therefore, you might actually recommend that you um, eat chocolate every day. However, you would recommend a certain amount of chocolate. So you're positioning yourself and you're saying this and that and that and that because the study, the results of the study supports that specific argument. And then you start to relate it to your uh, literature review. Aham Shay, don't surprise me, and or sorry, not, not me specifically, don't surprise your readers in the literature review by presenting something that it just comes out of nowhere. It all has to make sense. It all has to kind of, kind of like flows logically together. So, I mean, think of, think of it this way. So say, for example, you have a problem or an issue or an argument or whatever. And then how am I going to address this problem? How am I going to 
um, understand this phenomenon? And what did I do to understand this phenomenon? And what does that mean? This the session is what does it mean? What does it all mean? How do I interpret everything that I've done? What what how do I make sense of it all? How do I know the limitation of the study? Well, I mean, uh, consider for example sample size. Um, if you want to generalize, uh, if you want generalizable results. Uh, you have to consider sample size. If the sample size, yani your sample, if the population is a thousand and your sample size is only twenty, then it's not. You cannot say that this is generalizable. So this is a limitation. For example, uh, another limitation, or again, whether you're yani why you were you designed the research, but then when you're collecting the data you faced a lot of challenges that prevented you from collecting enough data or collecting it in the way that you wanted to collect it and so forth. You include that in your data. Yes, you cannot cover everything. And then you have to be realistic about what your, I mean, don't oversell your study or don't, don't claim that your study is doing something that it's not. Uh, the obstacles that that might have affected your results, or that any kind of limitation to result to that um, did not it is not, does not may, maybe does not present the whole idea or does not uh, present the way it was not presented the way that you would like. Uh, later on, you want a, a bigger population more i mean again you wanted to uh conduct the experiment um in different contexts on a larger scale with different variables included uh use different statistical um um, um tests or use different uh, advanced software or whatever again depending on your field of, of and on your areas of of, of study Time is another limitation, by the way. I mean, if we what the things that we can do if we had 24 um, or 25 hours a day, uh, time is, is a limitation. So you had to do this and that. Something that you might discuss, even whether it's practical or not, money-wise. Again, but and and then there are certain things that relate to the actual um, your field, certain like aspects. <laughs> Yes. Not, not only limitations, you look at the gaps as well. And so whether your paper has actually addressed things that was, or whether, again, you, you, you face something, you report on the limitation, and then the next research that you conduct basically addresses those limitations. And how are you going to overcome them? And how are you going to deal with that and so forth? or that you found a gap in some certain areas or some certain studies or uh, gaps in knowledge, and then you want to contribute through your research. It depends on the type of research and the type of study and so forth. For example, in statistical, uh, in, in certain statistical tests, certain like uh, the result is significant or not significant. Um, like SPSS does that for you, whether it's significant or not significant. So you know this is strong or not. In qualitative research, for example, if you're if if you're using, for example, you're using thematic analysis, a certain type of analysis, where it says if you find patterns in different data sets, then this is a, a significant um, point or significant, or this is something significant to report. So it depends on your area of expert, your the area that you're studying or the topic or the subject or whatever. It depends on the method. It depends on the research design. It depends on the analysis and and it depends on the field. Not only further investigation. You need to you need to clarify which areas that you are going to investigate further and how. 
for example, you've conducted a quantitative um, study, but then you say, however, to get a better understanding of the phenomena, we need to conduct further qualitative uh, research or studies. For example, again, this is a very generic um, example. Vice versa, if I conducted a qualitative result, uh, re, re, a study where the results might not be generalizable, then the next step, I would uh, conduct quantitative uh, studies based on the qualitative results in hopes of presenting results that are going to be generalizable to a larger population. It's recorded. <laughs> so you'll find it. Uh, it's recorded, sah, Dr. Basim. It's recorded, or a. I think it's going to be on their YouTube channel. Yes, it's going to be on their YouTube channel. Uh, you put the citation after. Um, Oh, the citation, you, it depends on, I mean, when you cite something, when it's not yours and it's not your original thought, you cite it. Whether it's at the end, it could be in the middle. Once you cite something, you, once you include something that's not yours, you have to cite it. And that's the beginning, at the end, the middle. Yes, this is the... AWC uh, YouTube channel. Um, okay. Another thing that you have to consider is again perspective uh, for future work. Oh, so, so where do I go from here? Again, is, is whether where do I go from here, or where do you would like to? Um, invite other people or other researchers, or where do you want the research in the field to go? You can present them with a challenge, you can present um, um, whichever. Again, this is, you would actually have to uh, include this in your discussion. And where do you think the research should go from, from, from where you stopped or from where you've reached? In many papers, um, especially the papers who present, um, who are, are sometimes there is an established, there is an established um, theory, for example, a very popular theory in the field, and everyone is using that theoretical framework and their studies, and then or a group of people with a study and saying, uh, no, no, no we have to reconceptualize our view of this and then we have to look again at this theory or these aspects uh, within the theory. And then we, they present you with a challenge. Let's look at it from a different point of view. And then basically what happens is that you see a lot of response to these kind of like articles, research articles where people start to kind of like take that and start to look at different ways of looking at, 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 at something that's been uh, around in the field for so many years. If you have questions. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, so, um, okay, so yes, so you interpret the results of what we already know. Uh, and you start to explain new understanding again. So you've, you're, you're, you're going to, if you're presenting something different or something new or something um, challenging or opposing to what's already established, you have to explain it further. Um, connected to the literature review and to your research question, very important to connect it to the research question. That's the, again, that's the central point. The research question is going to come up in every single section of your article, uh, your article, your assignment, your thesis, your dissertation, and so forth. And please, 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 please don't introduce new results in the discussion. Any questions? 
uh, can you please return the slide back? Thank you. Okay, just a second. Why not introduce something new? Because this is you, 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 all the results for the results section. You do not introduce anything new for the discussion. Any questions? When, when you're thinking about your discussion, you have to think about, does it provide the answer? Is the answer here? If not, then you would have to address this. I could not find the answer to this. And therefore, I, we need to look at, or we need to do this and this and that in the future. Uh, yes, it provided an answer and it has this and this and that implicate. These are the implications um, to the results or to the interpretation of the results. Can add the, I'm not, I don't know what you mean. Common mistakes in, in, in uh, yeah, yes, uh, negative results. Uh, you have to be very honest in terms of the results. If they're not the, the results that you expect, that's the answer to your question. For example, um, of course, in research questions, you don't have yes or no, or it's not, it's, it's better not to have a yes or no question. But I mean, let's just say a very simple thing. Um, do you think it is, is, chocolate good for you? Yes or no? Now, if you believe it's good, but the results is telling you it's not, you have to be very honest and report on that and say, it's, it's not. And these are, the, and this is the evidence. Hi. But again, how you report the negative result results also depends on each like yeah, like quantitative, I think, has a different way of, of presenting negative results, I think. Qualitative, we don't necessarily consider it as negative, but we consider it as a different perspective to what we've done, and we go deeper into the interpretation of it and so forth. So really, again, it depends on... Uh, but you have to be honest. And uh, because it's ethical, because it validates your, your results and everything when you present it as it, sh as it is, not you altering it. Um, and then at the end, of course, you'd have a conclusion where I put everything together, summary of everything, and putting everything together. But again, the most important thing, they're all important, to be honest, but uh, they all have to kind of like, all have to make sense and they all have to flow and they all have to, have to uh, follow like a logical sequence and they all have to relate to the research question. Yes, hatta within the qualitative and the quantitative uh, approaches, it, the, the, the design itself um, would, would inform the way that you present your, your results and the way you inter interpret them and the way they are considered valid or not. It's like the criteria that, um, that, would, that you would use or you would apply to, to see if the, the results are you know, this, your study as a whole is valid or not. Uh, sorry, I was just... Uh... Uh, in the method section, you mentioned the passive voice. What do you mean? 
uh, when the focus is on the actual method, not on, on the researcher. For example, the data was collected. in the Saudi context. The researcher collected the data. So here, my focus is not on the researcher, but rather on the data. So the data was collected. Again, this also, again, it differs from one field to another, where again, some, would say, would argue that the researcher has to be there, has to be present. We have to acknowledge the subjectivity of, of research by acknowledging that the researcher exists and this is the biases that might, uh, and th these are his or her biases that might influence uh, data collection, interpretation of the data, and the reporting of the data. Yes, again, depends on the field. If you uh, believe in and you believe that research is objective or could be objective, then you would do that. Um, but if you believe that uh, you cannot uh, avoid subjectivity and therefore must address it and address and address how it influences research, then the way that you report. Um, your results and the way that you discuss them and interpret them differs. So in these cases, you always refer back to what is accepted in your field. And in, in some cases, you might actually, yeah, is a kind of within with, with whichever field, especially in social, social sciences, is a kind of the common in your field, it's common to use quantitative, maybe you want to challenge that and use qualitative um, approaches to studying a specific phenomena or addressing a specific issue or addressing a problem or something. That's a very good point of view. And that's a very, uh, that's a very qualitative kind of approach to when you allow the research to speak. At least Madi, this, this is what my point of view. Maybe a lot of people would, would, would disagree and they would say, well, a quantitative border could, could present this as well. Uh, in terms of research, how can I reintroduce myself? Okay, Anishwa uh, Saati, Assistant Professor of Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages at the uh, English Language Institute. I I'm a qualitative researcher uh, and my field relates to or I'm, I'm L to motivate the motivation to learn a second to learn English basically, but generally to learn a second language, uh, education and educational psychology. Um, and this is why I tend to kind of avoid saying, well, it has to be objective because I believe in subjectivity and research cannot be avoided and should be addressed. Because I'm sure there's a lot of people who disagree with who disagree with me, but that's fine. Um, um, it's, it's fine. <laughs> oh, but uh, that's my website. I there's not not much there to be honest. Maybe a little bit. Is that my page? <laughs> Unfortunately, the speaker should should include a lot more information on her page. My bad. <laughs> um, any questions? Shall we go back to the question slide? Any questions? Any thoughts? Any um, anything that we'd like to add? Anything that you would like to comment on? Anything that you like to disagree? Uh, thank yeah. you, Dr. Nashwa, very much for this wonderful presentation. We really learned a lot and we enjoyed it. It's very organized, well organized, and uh, full of uh, details and information. Thank you again. Let's see if we have questions. Could you please? I, I know you, mashallah, have answered uh, all the questions here in the chat. 
but you can just raise your hand or open your mic right away. So uh, if you have any questions or comments. And thank you all again for attending uh, this wonderful presentation. And thank you, Dr. Nashwa. Thank you so much, but, Dr. Basham. Yeah, it, yeah, it's been Thank awesome. you for the invitation. There, there's a question here I would like to answer, which is, uh, Samir Muhammad, are you, uh, do you prefer to set the title of the study before the results or after the results? Usually, it's always better, or maybe you can have like a, like a rough idea of a title, but I think it's better to have like a finalized title at the end, when you're, everything is done and finalized. But then that's me, I don't know. Because you never know what the results could actually uh, what what comes up and what comes up comes up in the results. Okay, so I shared with you three links. The first one is, of course, the evaluation form. The second one, our booking system. So whenever you have any questions, any comments, or any, you need someone to look at your writing, you, you are welcome to book an appointment, and one of our writing specialists will be ready to help you. And the third one is our YouTube channel. Inshallah, we will upload this wonderful uh, presentation and workshop, inshallah, within 24 hours, inshallah. Uh, it will be on YouTube. And the uh, attendance link it is here. So the evaluation form. Make sure you write your name uh, correctly, capital letters, and you know the first letter. You know how to, to do this, but make sure to write your email correctly, please. And it's uh, our pleasure, Dr. Nashwa, to have you here in the Writing Center and for presenting in the Writing Center. So does the doctor have other workshop outside the center? I don't know. I think there is. I think there is one on your your YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have. Uh, yeah. I think two workshops. I guess by Dr. Oh. Yeah. Uh, available online. Just uh, go to the YouTube channel. Check there. You will see uh, two wonderful workshops in addition to this one here. I think. I think I might do a, a workshop on using Envivo. Um, okay. So. All okay, right. stay when tuned, I think. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. When will it be? Uh, I'm, we haven't decided yet, but uh, okay. coming soon. All right. Just stay tuned. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I think, uh, let me see if there are no more questions. Then... All right, so I think we reached the end of the workshop. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nashwa. Thank you all, and enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll see you, inshallah, uh, next week, inshallah. Thank you all. We'll see you. Thank you so much, Dr. Basim. Thank you to everyone at the Academic Writing Center, and thank you, everyone who attended, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you.